All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going, team? Here, and this is BXJS coding live stream, and uh, we are continuing our work on the BXJS website. Last time, we have implemented the basic search, and uh, this time around, I want to basically enhance it. So I want to use the type ahead for it. I want to dynamically load it because it is quite heavy, right? And we don't really want to have it all the time. So we are going to do that. And maybe then let me just move this one to the end. Maybe we will um, deploy the current version and see how do we set up the GitHub webhooks so that we can actually dynamically uh, refresh the index for our data, right? So um, let us get started, I guess. Uh, let me think. So we do not need that. We need what? We need... Um, First of all, I want my VSL. Next of all, I want npm run dev so that we actually have our server running, right? So it should be at localhost 3000 and uh, come on. There we go. So we got our website and we got PXGS and we got our search bar. So right now, uh, if you remember, then uh, basically it works. You type in, you hit enter, you get the results, right? So I would actually want to have it in a way that um, allows searching um, as in using the type ahead, right? So as in you, when you type, it has a small delay and then we have a nice um, results, at least like slice of them, uh, maybe lighter, smaller, let me think. So currently, uh, what do we need for that? So currently we got the index, no wait, this is, a, yeah, this is server and we got the, the uh, GitHub thing and we got the, so why is it so highlighted? Uh, no unnamed functions. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm gonna, right, I need to edit my ES. I just like, I, I think I need at some point to go ahead and, uh, whoops, sorry, redo my ES lint because I'm still relying on the uh, Airbnb ES lint and that thing has so many ridiculous rules that I, I don't even want to bother with them. It's like I have it edited so heavily that I don't know if it's even worth using it anymore. Can you please sort off about that? Um, thank you very much. Can I now get it parsed properly? There we go. Okay. So we got unknown word. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Okay. So we got our, uh, where's our search? There we go. So search literally finds and returns all the results. We're going to have an additional type ahead method, right? That is um, going to be providing slice of those results. So for type ahead, I just want to have a small quick. I mean, I guess maybe search is enough. So let's let's just uh, here's a question. Let me see. So if I go to input and we go to network and we reload that and we say, OK, clear this and go like, OK, Google. And that returns three kilobytes. Hey, that's not terrible. We can work with that. Um, yeah, I think that's, I mean, it's okay. So it's always 10 results. So it actually doesn't uh, return more than that. So we might as well just roll with the uh, existing backend method, right? So let's, let's make, let's turn this into a type ahead, right? Um, likely there's going to be an existing library to do that, but uh, we are gonna do it ourselves because why not? Uh, so let me just do our XJS. And uh, let me just turn on do not disturb so we don't see any emails. All right, so we are gonna do it ourselves with RxJS because RxJS is awesome. And also because we wanna do code splitting and uh, all the other fancy things, right? So we don't really care m too much about the size of it, right? So we are gonna use that. Um, okay, so let me think. We need what? We need, first of all, stop this. Maybe I should just do it in the terminal over here. Uh, hey, Haptic, welcome to the stream. So we're gonna go with RxJS. I think it's just RxJS, right? Yep, okay. So install RxJS and we need what? We need, uh, we need actually RxJS, uh, we need to create the event stream from the input, right? Or maybe not, maybe we just use a subject for that. So let me think. Uh, Maybe subject would be a better way. So basically, essentially, I, I think we're gonna go with, um, have a subject, our input, text inputs on every event would push the new value to the subject. 
And then we're going to use that subject to debounce and um, and yeah, and then just uh, do the type ahead thing, right? So here's how it's going to work. Uh, we're going to import uh, something from RxJS. And that something is gonna be subject, right? So here's our subject. Now, I think we need that subject to be global, probably like as in one subject per component. I mean, we're gonna have only one search component anyway. So it's gonna be a uh, type ahead subject, right? And it's gonna be new subject, right? Okay, and uh, here's what we are gonna do. Uh, instead of I mean, we're still gonna fetch results on enter anyway, I think. Yes, I think we still need that, right. But what we are also gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, type ahead subject next. By the way, this, uh, you see the stars, this is this IntelliCode extension for VS Code. And it is awesome. Like this is literally the best type ahead experience or like the you know, the auto suggestion experience I've had with uh, JavaScript, I think ever like this thing is incredible. Okay, and e targets value, right? So we send our new query. Um, I think where well, this is the key press. And here we have the key change. What was the extension called extension is uh, I think it's literally called IntelliCode. Uh, wait a second. Yes, Visual Studio IntelliCode is preview now, but man, it works incredible. Like it's it's just really good. Just search for IntelliCode, I think is the first one that pops up. AI assisted developer productivity. It is really good. All right, uh, let me think set query set results, I guess we'll just go with the question, do I want to do that here? Hmm. We do it on, on key press or do we I mean, the question is, why do I have a two handlers if both of them essentially do the same thing, right? So I get I, I, we can, they probably can optimize it to one handler. So we don't really need that, which means I can just copy it over here. And uh, we can kill this thing, right? Uh, so we can kill I think that should work. So basically, when we press the key, we get the query, we set the query, if the query is length zero, then we just return because it just resets the thing. If the key is enter, we fetch the results, I think with a new query here. And otherwise, we just reset them. And uh, if the if it's escape, we reset them. And if it's everything else, so essentially, if the query was set, we are gonna send the new actually, this should be new query, right? We're gonna send the new query to the subject. And essentially, if we do type ahead, uh, subscribe to value console log new value. And uh, right now we not vol val there we go. So right now, once we um, I, I should probably npm run dev start server. So right now, once I started, we should see the console showing us basically all the new like all the new uh, values, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know there's like errors and everything. What is this actually? Uh, provided the value without unchanged as well. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's expected. Um, so Okay, so then she doesn't trigger. So key up is not triggered when on change happens. That is okay. I somehow assumed that would work. Um, yeah, handle change. Right, I guess I was wrong. Uh, so maybe I forgot something about react, I guess. All right, so let us change this a bit. It means we have to handle query changes over here. And um, query changes, I guess, this is going to be yes, just query. And uh, thank you very much. We don't need return here. Right, and I think I'm going to use this one, right, and we're just going to send it query on key press. So as soon as the key presses one emit the new value. And theoretically, right now, if I refresh, we got this thing, yeah, no more errors. So let's uh, Google, right? There we go. So we got Google, there are some double values, which means we can now set up 
the fetching, right? So what we want to do is we want to take this subject. We want to say, okay, first of all, uh, okay, right. I think this is not how you'll do it anymore. So it used to, the RxJS used to have all the methods attached essentially to observable, but right now they come as the separate operators. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, uh, I think we want the filter method. Uh, where is the F, uh, F, 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 F flat map filter, right? I think you import them. So you can do pipe, right? Pipe. Okay, and then how do you do filter? Where do you import it from? Okay, RxJS 6 tutorial. <laughs> I, I like I literally haven't used RxJS 6 yet. I've worked with RxJS 5 for a long time. And then they basically changed everything because pipes are coming and um, there's better approach of do, for doing all of that now. So uh, yeah, okay, this is what we want. Subscribe, where is uh, observable pipe user defined, subscribe, da, da, da. import. So we, okay, we import I mean, we don't need to import pipe. I think it's it's part of the default. Okay, so we can import stuff from our XJS operators. Got it. Okay. Um, yes. So we are gonna import map filter scan. We need filter. We don't care about. Uh, we need flat map here. Actually, do we need flat map? No, we don't need flat. No. Um, let me think. What do we actually want to do? So we want to. Whenever the stuff comes, we want to first of all filter it so that it's specific value. Then we're gonna do the query. And uh, I guess we want to write it to the result. So this all has to be so has to happen in the component, right? I guess flat map doesn't matter. So I guess we'll, we'll, let's just start with filter, right? So let we get this and actually we're gonna say, okay, const sub um, type ahead, type ahead subscription, or let's just call it type head dollar, that's simpler. So we are gonna pipe it into, how does it work with the filter? Is there an example? Come on, show me. Filter source map merge pipe uh, map. Okay, so you literally just call function filter and then you say, uh, so the value is we're going to filter it by value length, uh, more than say, three symbols, right? So let's let's say we only allow um, type ahead that is longer than three symbols. And what we also want to do is we want to have a hook that is use, um, I think, effect, right? And I think we actually want to wrap the whole thing into use effect. So use effect, and there's the effect thing, right? We're gonna use it once. That's a dot C. It has to be comma. So we're gonna use the effect hook to set it up. It's only gonna be set up once, and then we are gonna return the cleanup function, right? We're gonna say type ahead dollar um, close. No, not closed. I, I think it's unsubscribe. This is what we want, right? This is basically gonna clean it up for us. And I guess we don't really need the whole function. So we can just do that. Okay, so in theory, that should not leak any events that should not leak any memory and Google, there we go. All right, but we also need another filter. So and pipe takes just a Okay, so comma separated functions. Okay, so we're gonna filter. And then we're gonna have another function. That is gonna be distinct until changed, I believe it was called. Um, do, 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 distinct until changed. There we go. So we want that filter distinct until changed. Did I just use it or does it have any parameters? No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. Um, let me think. Filter distinct until changed. So this will basically ensure that uh, we won't get those double triggers, right? So let me just reload this. And we're gonna say, okay, cool, Google. And as you can see now, we no longer have the duplicates, right? So we only have the unique values that were actually dispatched when the user types. Okay, so what we wanna do next is we actually want, so because the user is typing whenever, right? It can take some time, it can take longer, he might change his mind and start typing something again. We want to, uh, debounce, I think, right? So this is emits a value after only a particular time span without another source emission. Exactly, this is what we want. So one debounce time, 
which will delay the execution of observable by a specific time. And in our case, I think I would set it for something like um, 400 milliseconds. I guess that should be enough. So in theory, if I just go here and start like Google, blah, 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 and I erase it and okay, now I stop and now we get the emission of Google value over there. So I think we might not even need the key press over here. I mean, we, we actually do need it, but I guess do we want, we don't need it, the enter anymore, right? So we actually, what we want to do here is we want to subscribe to a value and instead of uh, logging it, we just do fetch results, set results, right? This is literally all we need to do. And then here's the value. We no longer need that. And, uh, which means we also can do this and set, uh, we can return here and emit. Yeah, I guess we don't care. So we can emit the value every time. And this doesn't matter. And this also doesn't matter. So I think that simplifies the code quite a bit. So let's, let's check it out. Refresh that. So if we go like, okay, Google, there we go, that works. And uh, each child should have a key. Um, did I not have the keys? Yes, I did not have the keys. Okay, key is gonna be item uh, URLs. Okay, reload that. So we like go Google, blah, 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 and then I reset it and we got the Google search. Um, what are you, I just added the keys. Did I need to refresh? Okay, let's try Google. I hit enter, we get the immediate results. All right. Um, yeah, that looks fine, right? So if I raise it, it still queries the thing. Okay, so that means that if the query is empty, we have to return. That's true. Okay, we should only emit it if it's not empty. All right, so let's see. Uh, Google, erase it. Nice. Okay, now it works as expected. Okay, um, and yeah, let's try escape. So if we go Google, I hit escape. And it also works fine. Cool. Right, so we got our type ahead um, that should have increased the bundle size to some extent, right? Because we are importing all those RxJS things. Um, what is the RxJS? There's a way to import it from um, subject. Not, not as in not from the whole package, because I believe that is what is what? Why is it not found? Come on, API subject. Yes, there we go. Um, import, no, there's no example. Okay, rxjs import subjects. Um, I believe that so basically you can also import it from a specific thing that is gonna decrease the bundle size in the long run. Uh, the compat, we don't want compat. Okay, so subject from slash subject. Okay, that work. Are we still, no, oh, this is compat subject, okay. No, this is not what we want. Uh, how do I do this? Operate, no, this is not operators, right? So this should be something, Ugh, why don't they have this under, am I, am I just not reading this correctly? Maybe it's somewhere here in the docs uh, as our XJS. I guess just destructing should work as well, right? So this, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, this works, right? So theoretically, it should produce a small enough bundle for me not to care, basically. But here's the deal. So now we have this search, which uses quite a bunch of packages, right? And every time the page loaded, it's going to be loaded as well, which is okay-ish, but not exactly what we want, right? So we can actually try to check. So we got page with it. This is 3.5 megabytes with the debugging and everything. That is a lot. And if we go now to the pages and I just um, remove the search, right? I go like, okay, now we clean the search. We reload the page. That is 2.8 megs, 2.9. Okay, so it's like 600 kilobytes less. Okay, it's a, in debug mode and there's a lot of stuff around it. But still, that is like quite a difference, right? So there's significant size. So we don't really want to load it immediately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dynamically load this component and render it only when the user clicks a button and says, hey, I actually want to 
uh, search right now, right? Because you, it's like it's not not like user is going to be searching all the time, so it's going to be a specific action. So we are going to use new React suspense uh, to do exactly this. Uh, why are you complaining? React must be in scope. Sure, here you go. Have a React import React from React. Happy now. Uh, fetch fetch is not defined. What do you mean not defined? It's a browser API. Okay, whatever. Um, yes, as I said, I need to edit my ES lint and I've been lazy about doing this on my Windows machine. But okay, so what we need to do is we actually need to, uh, to, to, to let me think. So first of all, we need to say we have a state um, show search, right? And by default, it's going to be false. We're going to have this show search false and uh, const show search uh, this state and search is only going to be shown if show search is true so if you load this right now you are going to see okay there's still 3.5 megs because we're still importing the whole thing so we need to change that and um we would need two things first one is next.js dynamic imports and the second one is the react suspense which would actually allow us to do the whole thing so here's the question do they have a complete example so that i don't have to think about that suspense no okay next.js react suspense that's got to be an example somewhere uh, ready for React Suspense, React Suspense and SSR. What are the downsides to Next.js? The sync rendering in React. Boilerplate, uh, size doing Mason work. Uh, code splitting. I mean, okay. Theoretically, we should be able to just use the, okay, let's see, Suspense, style j 63 Now, this is not what we want, but um, I guess, yeah, okay, you know what, whatever, let's go with the, I think we could use just the dynamic, um, dynamic import component, right? So we got this dynamic thing from the Next.js as a part of the framework, which is very handy. And so just throw it somewhere here. Yes, and exactly, what we do is we, instead of importing the components, we say that it's gonna be, uh, search right but it's going to be dynamic so it's only going to be imported when it's explicitly rendered so theoretically right now if i reload the page we should see 2.9 megs exactly so it's no longer loaded immediately it is now now the webpack the next.js and all the tool chain it knows that this component doesn't have to be rendered and loaded immediately which saves us quite a bit of kilobytes basically right and uh, just create dynamically loaded search component. Put it this way. And now what we need to do is we need uh, to add a way to somehow show it, right? So we need some sort of a search bar, I guess. Um, I guess we can wrap the whole thing into search bar and be like, okay, so by default, we just have a button here that says search on click is gonna be this handle, uh, I guess toggle search, or I mean, we don't have toggle, we're gonna just have show search, right? Because once we load it, we just uh, keep it there because it doesn't matter because we already loaded the whole thing. And that actually should be RO function that binds us to the current instance. And show search is gonna be this set state is gonna be very simple, show search, uh, come on, uh, search true. There we go. And I think, what are you not liking here? Missing an explicit uh, type. Yeah, okay, sure, type, but this is some of those rules are the silliest, but you know what? Why not? Cool. So now we have the search button. As you can see, it's still 2.9 megs, but once we hit it, we actually load dynamically this additional chunk which is 600.2 kilobytes, uh, sorry, 602 kilobytes, not point. So it is quite big. And now we should be able to just uh, search as we did before. There is also another thing we wanna do is we want to say, okay, show search. So we only wanna render the button if the search is not shown, right? So there we go, we click it and we swap it for the search essentially. 
Uh, let's call it search in the, uh, I guess we also want the class uh, button to make it slightly nicer. Search in the, looks slightly nicer. There we go. And uh, uh, yeah, class name. There you go. It's actually, so it seems to understand the class it just complains about it, right? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. I just like, I can't wait for the react fire when we can just write class. Like this would, I still do the same error after like what, five years, four years of react, still type class every time. Okay, uh, so we got this search works, we got like Google and we actually want the suspense, right? Because um, React suspense because right now if you see so we got this uh, we're loading this locally and it's obviously fast but if we simulate the slow network so if I put it on slow 3G right and we click on search button you will see that there's this loading placeholder that is not very pretty the question is do they actually provide um, loading thing oh yeah okay so we don't even need React Suspense in this case. This is curious, so you don't even have to think about that. This is, I, I mean, I guess this is pretty cool. <laughs> so we don't even have to think about the whole React underlying stuff because uh, we can literally just use um, Next.js related tools. I, I'm, I'm down with that. So I'm just gonna put an input that is um, basically gonna be more or less the same as the input over here. I guess, yeah, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna copy this. And what I'm gonna do is basically before it loaded, I'm gonna say, okay, we got the inputs, search, uh, duh, 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 and it's gonna be read on me. That's it, right? So theoretically, if we go here right now, I am gonna disable the throttling and then I'm gonna go like, okay, slow 3G and then we kick it here. We got the search for article, but it's read only. And once it's loaded, which is actually taking a lot of time. Can you help me? I can set up my debugger for C and C++. Um, I mean, I can try, but I'm not very good with C and C++. Like last time I wrote it was like in, in first years of university and that was like 10 years ago. But uh, yeah, I mean, that depends. What debugger are you using and what kind of problems do you have? Okay, let's uh, let's change the placeholder to loading search, right? So it's gonna be basically seamless transition in our case. And theoretically, if we, even if we do it here, it should be like, yeah, that, I mean, that looks way better, I think, right? So if we go, okay, fast 3G and then loading and um, uh, that's, yeah, that's still a lot fast. Yeah, there you go. So we actually have the search working and I guess, yeah. I mean, I guess we would need some sort of a loader on the bar itself, because the data might not come immediately, but this is like details, we can talk about that later on. But we actually did um, dynamic loading as well. Error when I try to debug the problem. Uh, what kind of error? This is a very vague thing to start from, you know, just uh, let us know what the error, maybe someone in chat can help you. Okay, let me think. What I also wanna do is, wanna be like style, um, wait, can I, how can I, so basically, I don't know, I guess, you know what, for now it does, what is launch JSON error? I don't, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> what is launch.json error? That is, that doesn't really tell me anything, I'm sorry. Okay, let me just, meanwhile, commit that. So we actually implemented the dynamic, dynamically loaded search component with type ahead. Um, okay. Uh, impl uh, did I check the thingy in here? No, I didn't. There we go. All right, uh, let me do this, add this, and I um, add type ahead, type ahead to search, uh, search, and dynamically load search bar when needed. There we go. Okay, so we got that. Now, uh, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. IRC channels for like the C uh, related stuff is usually pretty good. And the people there are very 
um, open to helping um, new buyers who wanna, you know, who have problems essentially. I remember hanging out there myself, um, as I said, you know, back in university where I had like C++ related stuff. Okay, so we are actually done with the uh, news page essentially. I mean, it doesn't look super pretty and looks okay, I guess. Um, the question I have, let me just think for a second. So we are taking the weekly, we are episodes URL. So we are using this URL to fetch the content. Hey, Donna, welcome to the stream. All right, so we get this content and we are querying it, right? Um, the question is, uh, wait a second. So let me just console log. So what I'm worried about is we are using, we're querying the GitHub right away, right? So we are like literally asking for the content from GitHub. But GitHub has limits on the requests. And if all those requests will come from my backend, they will ban my server at some point or will just, you know, throw errors. So raw content, uh, here's the question, raw GitHub uh, rate limits. Do they have any rate limiting on raw? Yes, rate limiting on blah, 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 rate limiting uh, cycle six API addresses. Uh, we hit the same builds, personal access token. So what, what are the rate limits? I'm curious. There we go, there's a rate limits. Uh, rate limits, rate limiting 500 remaining, rate limit reset. What are the typical rate limit rules? There we go. API request, 5,000 requests per hour. That is a lot, but I guess that does mean we have to actually cache the content, right? So we cannot just mash the GitHub as it is not very good. And I think we actually, in our case, we could cache it for a week or something, right? Because it doesn't really change. So I guess we are gonna, we're gonna add a new method here that is gonna be fetching the things for us and using the cache as well. Uh, so we're gonna have episodes cache. We already have the episodes cache, right? And I think I'm gonna remove this limit here. One day, sounds fine. So we're gonna have one day cache. Uh, that's still, you know, way less requests to the GitHub than it would have been. And we are gonna have new method over here, fastify episodes. Um, okay, we are gonna get const episode URL is gonna be requests query URL. So I'm just gonna send it in a query. And here, instead of loading it directly, this is gonna be, I already used this server somewhere i don't remember where exactly i think it was on one of the components right yeah there we go so we need that bit okay i removed it too early so we need this bit and uh yeah so we got the uh, episodes there's our episodes um data url let's just call it this way Okay, so we got this episode data URL and instead of fetching just the URL, we're gonna be saying, okay, this and then uh, URL and that's it. And I think I also need encode URI component here, right? Because we need to encode it properly. All right, that is, yeah, maybe I, maybe I move that into a new variable because that is too long. On episode URL, let's just put it this way. So URL, there we go, save it, reformat, that looks much more readable. Okay, so we got this episode URL, we are fetching it. And this is gonna be here in the server, it's gonna be episode query URL, exactly. And then we're gonna try to get the episode URL from the cache. And we're gonna call it episode text, right? And if there is a text, we just send it back. If there is no text, we are gonna be like episode URL, then text is what we want. And then we're just gonna save it as episode URL as a key result as the result and then send it back. All right, so I think that should work. 
So we start the server. So theoretically, we should now be using our own backends to fetch the data. And the articles should be cached. So the actually the request should be quite much faster because, well, we no longer have to query the GitHub, right? Yep, that is definitely much faster. And uh, just to make sure that I am sane and uh, it actually works, got episode text from cache, right? Um, and then we're gonna be like episode URL, episode length. I just, I don't wanna type the whole text basically. Uh, hey, Mother Putra, welcome to the stream. All right, so let's check if that actually works the way we expect it to. So the first time it should not hit the cache, right? We get the uh, thing from the GitHub. Now, if I refresh it again, we should hit the cache. Exactly, cool. So we actually get, it actually works, cool. Hey, guys, to rise, welcome to the stream. All right, um, let me think. So we got that, we cache this now, so we should no longer have any issues with um, rate limits on GitHub. I think that was the last place where we actually queried the GitHub uh, directly. So let me just see, git uh, use uh, server cache to prevent hitting GitHub uh, rate limits when fetching um, episode markdown is what I wanna say. I mean, here's the thing, now that we are actually now that we are actually doing this on server, we could also move the rendering to the server because why would you render it on a client if you can just tell a server to do that, right? So we are just gonna do that. This will save us a few seconds probably, maybe even more, at least a few CPU cycles for the user. So uh, yeah, I don't know, whoops, that is not what I wanted to click. So here's the thing. So first of all, it's gonna be JSON now, and we are gonna have markdown, and we're gonna have HTML. And you're gonna be markdown, it, nope, markdown, and you are gonna be HTML. So right, now we have to tweak the server a bit. So we got this markdown thing, and which means that uh, we have to change this a bit. Uh, let's rename it to episode data without S. And then in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be like, okay, so there's the res, res is const uh, HTML, right? And res is, let's rename it to markdown. And uh, in this case, we're gonna set the cache to the object markdown HTML. And we send back, I guess we can just construct the results and be like, okay, markdown HTML, right? And then just save it to the cache and send it back. Results and results, there we go. I think that should basically work and that should also speed up our rendering quite a bit. Because I mean, you know, if you can offload some heavy lifting to the server, that's always a good idea in my opinion. Since we're anyway using the server to cache the requests. All right, that seems to be working. And that also seems to be working just fine. Is there an error or something? Wait a second. Uh, where is my preserve console thingy? Uh, preserve log. There is JS aborted. Why is it aborted? Okay, I mean, whatever, it still loads, still works. So I'm, you know what, not gonna question that. Okay, so this now works. Um, get, so we just move the markdown rendering to the server. Um, da, 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 get commit render markdown of episodes on the server. That is always good. Okay, so let me just, um, double check all the code and make sure I actually query the GitHub on the, through the server because we need to cache all of that, right? We got, this is the link, this is our local link, this is the GitHub, we are using our server. We are, so this is the navigation, which literally doesn't do anything yet. We got the search, which is again using our server. 
Right, and I think those pages on index, we don't really have anything. And on weekly page, we got, again, our server querying. So we, those, yes, yeah, that looks fine. And this get episodes is coming from the components GitHub, so it should work fine. Cool, so we are now actually caching all the results, so we should not hit the limit of GitHub rates, even if we have like a few hundred of users querying the pages. Apparently it does no fetch, but whatever. So um, here we got the cache, we got the cache here, we got the cache here. So all looks just fine, I think, right? Right, okay, so now, um github hook how do we okay we probably have to read about github hooks but i don't know if i want to do this today i mean the stream has been going for quite some time and i don't know if i feel like researching hooks right now because i mean the hooks themselves are really simple concept right it's literally just when something gets published uh, on github it will call a specific uri with a specific data the question here is actually how do you validate that hooks? Um, I'm sorry, what? Why are you not searching? Okay, GitHub hooks. So the question here is how do you know that the hook trigger actually comes from GitHub, right? Because right now I assume that it might be a malicious hook from whatever and I have this cache thing that doesn't allow calling hooks more frequently than every three days, I think. Yeah. So it would be nice if we could get rid of that and just rely on the GitHub validation. But how do we do that? Um, wildcard event, is there, wait a second, is there a node package that just allows me to be like, hey, GitHub webhooks, GitHub webhook. Uh, of course there is, okay, OctaKit webhook. Oh, there's an official one even. OctaKit is the official thing, right? Um, OctaKit webhooks. Is OctaKit a fan organization or is it the official GitHub one? This is OctaKit GitHub IO. Let's see, GitHub. Yeah, okay, so this seems to be pretty official. And what is this webhooks.js does? It's webhook API, webhook. Uh, okay, so you have to provide a secret and it's a webhook middleware okay but i already want middleware right i can specify the thing quite literally place this with your own webhook proxy uh verify okay so they have this verify method which is event payload signature webhook sign webhook verify and receive okay how does it work? Like, okay, first of all, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just go to BXJS websites da, 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 and have a look at the hook setup. So what do you actually need to provide once you set them up? So webhooks, uh, add webhook. Yes, this is my password, thank you very much. So payloads, application type, one JSON, seek. Oh, so you provide the secret yourself. Okay, so you can literally, oh, right. So that means that the validation is gonna be super stupid, right? Because you literally compare your own secrets. How does it actually give it um, verify? Is it literally like just a part of the body or something? Uh, event payload secrets. Yeah, what's the event payload? Where do you get it from? Middleware, right, let's, let's check the middleware get payload it is what request body oh it's okay so it's literally body and is is probably json right and i'm guessing it is gonna be let's just um secrets it is oh it's in the headers hub signature okay so we get the header x hub signature we make sure that it is valid as in it's the same as we specified and then we know that it is basically what we want, right? Uh, send me push events, let me select individual events and we only want releases, right? No, we don't want pushes, we want releases. Okay, that seems straightforward. 
which means that we need instead of this cache thing and which means we can kill that release cache um, first of all we also would need to send yes we need uh what was the second next js part so there's like the private the public config and the private config and we want the private now right because we don't want our public or the secret webhook key to be right uh, no config configuring a custom configuration closing configuration there we go server runtime there we go okay this is what we want and we want to say that um don't care about the comments here so let's call it uh webhook secret right webhook secret webhook secret or it's gonna be one two three four so by default it's just gonna well, okay. one two three five that's more way more secure <laughs> okay uh so we got our server runtime config webhook secrets which means we're gonna go to the github here and now we need that uh package from next.js get config there we go so uh, const get config require our next config thing and i think you use it the same way on the server right i at least i hope so okay um anyway let's 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 give it a shot uh so we got this thing we get the config we need the server runtime config and in this case we are going to be so first of all we need to kill this release cache thing because we don't don't really care about it anymore right and in this case we need to validate hook right is what we're going to be doing we don't care about this thing as well as long as the hooks are validated with the correct signature we basically don't care and all right so in this case fastify um i think it's headers and the header is x hub signature um if header is not equal to server runtime config uh well, what what did i call it webhook secret then return um console error webhook called with wrong secret just so that we know that someone is trying to break our server although they won't really get too far with it reply um i think it was like uh, wait a second where's my fastify documentation fastify i think it was like status and then sends um but i don't remember da, 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 reply where's my reply docs there we go ah dot code okay um codes um http status codes i think what well, was it not allowed for three i think no 403 is forbidden but 401 is unauthorized i think right 401 there we go so i want to say 401 send error uh wrong secret okay so there we go so we can test it actually right so we can say okay npm run dev we run this here and something broke because get config is not a function okay um right so how do i use the get config on server in next.js uh, get config from next config i am importing it from next config right right yes that looks fine what is it like get config dot default is that what you want i guess we can just uh ah, okay no that will be better i think this is what you want is like es6 stuff nope um property of undefined or null right uh, um right okay so how do i use that on server next is config next is config yes I have a bit of a noob question what benefit does fastify have over express is it just faster um i mean first of all it's faster and it has lower overhead it has integrated schema validation which actually makes it faster but the my favorite part is that you don't have to install 200 packages to make it handle simple post requests 
So, and also I really like the plugin system so that, you know, our GitHub package is actually the plugin, which is seamlessly integrated into the, can be integrated into any other server if we want to. So, you know, I can just take this file and throw it into any Festify and it will actually work. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. They are releasing version 2.0 quite soon. So uh, do check it out because I mean, I've, I've been using it, I think instead of express in majority of cases, uh, but here's the, how the hell do I use the okay, next JS? What is the server? Blah, blah, server runtime config, custom server. How do I do that? Issues. There we go. Um, undefined staging environment. No, that's not the problem I have. Problem I have is that I cannot actually access it at all. Uh, next tab, next config. Where do I get it from? Quite new to full JavaScript stack. So thanks for being wealth of knowledge. I mean, more than welcome, as I said, you know, as usual, come to Discord server, ask questions, more than happy to help and uh, give you my, at least my opinion on things, you know? Okay, so, so people suggest just, oh no, oh, come on. That looks ugly as hell. I don't wanna do that. Public runtime config, server config, config set config, uh, and browser, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, yeah, it's in a profile. Sorry, I don't, I, I mean, I have the bot enabled, but I never got to configure it. I should probably do that at some point. <laughs> it's like people are trying to use it and I think it probably even replies. I don't know, I cannot see it, but I never actually added any commands. I just enabled it and I was like, yeah, whatever, fine. <laughs> okay, mock environment next. Uh, yeah, this is mocking. So how do I... From next config. Oh God, come on. There's really no easy way of doing that stuff. Server runtime config. Um, yeah, please. Uh, get config is not a function. That sounds like what exactly the problem I have. Import, do, 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 so that's my secret. Yes, cool. This is exactly the problem that I have. And what is the reply? Next config is stateful module. It is only initialized when Next.js is initialized. Okay, so they literally say, hey, you know, separate your config and yeah, okay. Oh, come on. Let's call it um, nvconfig.js, right? I'm just gonna call it this. I'm gonna take the whole thing over here. Whoops, that is not what I wanted. Be like, okay, module exports, and I'm gonna paste this. So we're gonna just have this as a separate thing because apparently that's the way to go. And config, whoops, and config. Oh, come on, I cannot type today. Require and config JS, and this is gonna be and config. Okay, so this theoretically should work in both client and server. And then here, instead of using this get config, we are literally gonna be like, okay, so first of all, I need that variable name. We're gonna be like, okay, uh, this from um, env config, whoop, okay, come on, where's my, where's my auto suggestion? There we go. Server runtime config, right? Yes, and then we should have the webhook secret. Okay, so I think that should work now. Okay, well, at least it compiles and runs. Okay, so now uh, let me just uh, create a new tab over here, make it a bit bigger. So now we should be able to do Carl HTTP localhost 3000 update and that should fail. where? Oh, right, it was API slash update, right? There we go, yep, okay. So right now it's wrong secret, but if we say, oh, how the hell do you specify headers for Carl? Um, da, 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 we don't care about that, Carl headers. Like curl is the most confusing tool ever. I can never remember how to use any of this stuff that it has, even though I'm using it, well, not on daily basis, but you know, weekly basis, let's put it this way. Okay, so we got this hub signature paste it over here. One, two, three, four. 
Yep, that's still wrong. And if we do this, um, okay, it's still wrong. So what is, am I reading the headers wrong? Wait a second, where's my Fastify documentation? I might be just reading the headers wrong. That also might be the problem. Come on. Um, da, 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 where is request docs? Request. I should be dot headers. Okay. Um, right. Request headers. Maybe, maybe I am just, I just make sure that it actually, the values are what I think they are. Put it this way. We don't actually need the other things. Right. Uh, restart this thing. Webhook called with, yeah, so we got the errors correctly. Now we just need to make it work. Right. Uh, call the hook. And it actually, no, it is doesn't work. So X, oh, it lowercases everything. Okay. Uh, we can do that. So this should make it work, right? Well, no, you, you're, you're gonna fail. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. I think this should make it work. And then we got everything ready for the webhooks, right? Yep, that seems to be working just fine. Yep, cool. All right, and if I call it with whatever else value, it just fails. Cool, so we are, we are actually done with this. Well, um, yeah, I can kill this console log because we no longer need it. Get status. Uh, yeah, we need to add everything. It's use correct uh, secrets validation in the webhook. Yes, not correct. Use uh, secret header secret validation, uh, whatever. That, that sounds fine. All right, uh, so we did that and basically we're ready. We're ready, so that's that's done with the setup for the webhook is done. We're now basically done with the weekly news page. So we need the info page. This is very simple. Still pondering if I wanna have the videos page there. I don't know if that's gonna be of any help because that means I have to maintain another database of things or query it from dev tool or YouTube or whatever, which uh, not sure if that sounds nice, but yeah, so we did that. We did that. We just need the info page, I guess. And then just host it somewhere. I probably don't need to buy a server because it's quite lightweight and we're using GitHub essentially for everything. So probably going to host it on my current, uh, tiny server, which should work just fine. But yeah, that's basically it. So I am gonna take a few seconds to push this to the GitHub. Meanwhile, feel free to throw your questions into the chat if you have any. If not, then uh, thank you very much for watching. As I already said, you are more than welcome to join our Discord server to chat there about any things that you might have uh, misunderstood. And uh, yeah, what did you have for lunch? Uh, it was mashed potatoes. <laughs> Okay, um, wait a second. You, I just got confused right now. There we go. Okay, um, update tasks is what I wanted to do. And we are done here. Cool. Push that to the GitHub. Probably would be a good idea to add some unit tests at one point, but I'm feeling too lazy for that right now. All right. Cool. I guess we're done then. So it doesn't seem like there's any more questions or anything like that. As usual, what I already said, feel free to join our Discord server. Feel free to ask your questions there. Um, there's going to be more streams this week around, likely on Friday. We also have the JavaScript news podcast on Saturday. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I am, well, I'm using PowerShell sometimes, but I'm predominantly using VSL. And actually, I am running the Terminator over here, which is the Linux shell, as you can see using the X server. So I have the X server running and then I run the Terminator from the Linux side as the console because I don't really like any terminal emulators that there are on the Windows. They're all kind of iffy. And this one just works really good. Um, yeah. All right.
cool um any more questions any more things to ask about um meanwhile let me just make sure that everything pushed correctly i am slightly paranoid about that yeah so yeah okay we, we seem to be fine cool I need to change my ES lint because this one is a bit annoying and Airbnb is honestly overkill for my projects. They are doing too many things that I don't even think about. All right, guys. Well, that seems to be it. No more questions, no more things to talk about, at least for today. As I said, once again, thank you very much for watching. Thank you guys for your support and I see you next time. Bye.